and a very, very good morning. Long time no see, and I have to say, I have missed this, and it is great to be finally back. So, I did say last time that I was gonna get my head together and think of some ideas. Um, as you can obviously tell, I am back in Edel. Now, I thought for the next few days, myself and Graham, who's behind the camera, are gonna spend the next four days exploring routes that I have previously done. However, we are gonna go into them in a lot more detail. And for today, we are gonna go from Edel back to Buxton. Um, so the idea is that we are gonna explain the route in a bit more detail, talk about the line's history, and obviously we have a stop off at New Mills. We're gonna go between the two stations there. And I'm gonna talk to you about Peak Forest Canal and more of the in, uh, industrial heritage that they have. So. It's been a while since saying this, and I'm glad to say it again, but welcome once again to Down The Line. So it's not only great to be back doing these videos, but it's great to be back in Edel. As you can imagine, being out for so long, I've been at home extremely, extremely bored. So it's great to be back out again with Graham. Um, and you've never been here before, have you? No, I've never been here before. Um, I've come to the Peak District many, many years ago, um, but this is my first time here in this part of the Peak District. And already, I love it already. We've been here about what, half an hour? About that, yeah. About half an hour, something like that. And I already <laughs> love it already. It's absolutely gorgeous. Edale Station, just what I imagined it to be. So yeah, first impressions, spot on. And it just goes to echo what I've said about this station before. Um, obviously, we've done an episode based on this, so I'm not going to go into it in the detail that I did before because um, I don't want it to be samey, samey. But the next part of detail will probably become at New Mills when we walk from New Mills Central to New Mills Newtown, um, going over the, you know, the Goit Valley. Um, I'm not going to spoil it. You're going to wait and see, actually. Um, but no, we're, our train... Well, we're here quite early doing a bit of train spotting, getting the numbers down. I know. Um, Three numbers already. Yeah, Each. can't complain. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, our train comes in about 35 minutes and then on to New Mills and the start of our journey. So, yeah, bear with and uh, we will commence very shortly. So, if you want to see and learn more about Edel solely, then I have another video which is solely based on that in my videos. But what I will tell you about is the Hope Valley line itself. Now, it was proposed originally to meet its extension from Rowsley to Buxton. However, the Doran, Chinley and Midland Railway had a more direct service from Chinley to Manchester. And thus, the Hope Valley line was continued on and we now know it to what it's at today. Um, by Midland standards, the building of this line was relatively straightforward. However, there were two quite big obstacles and they come in the form of tunnels which is Calburn Tunnel just up ahead which I've spoken about before and also over by Grindleford you've got Totley Tunnel now they are both extremely long and you can just imagine you know nowadays we've got you know all of this equipment and tunnel boring machines and etc um, and you can see you know like we're building HS2 for example how slow um, and how long it does take to actually complete quite a lengthy tunnel you know back in those days to build them too again it's it's the time in which it was built and things like that were built to last they were done extremely well as is quite a common feature of the railways when we look back into its past um but yeah so like i said we're going to see a couple more services coming past and um, i think there's a service to sheffield that will stop um and then our train will arrive so new mills is definitely coming up just bear with Right on time, the northern service to Manchester Piccadilly arrived into Platform 1 and we departed Edel with the magnificent sights of the Peak District in full view. 
We then passed through Kalban Tunnel, just a short way up the line, and then on to our first stop of Chinle Station, before arriving at the charming New Mill Central Station to change over from the Hope Valley to the Buxton Line. So, we are now at New Mills. Um, so this is well known for coal mining and cotton mills. Um, so this has a rich industrial heritage. Um, behind me is Tor Vale Mill, which is grade two listed. And you can just imagine the activity that would have gone on here. And this was one of many. And we are now also stood on the Manelium Walkway, which goes over this magnificent river. So we're going to walk along it and just take in the views. It's brilliant. New Mills lies at the junction of two rivers, the River Goit and the River Set. It is on the northwestern edge of the Peak District National Park and coal mining was the first industry of the area with up to 40 pits and mines. From 1788, cotton mills and print works were also built in what is known as the Tours Gorge. It also possesses three railway lines and the Peak Forest Canal, which we will touch on shortly. The short walk from New Mill Central provides you with the view of three very impressive features. The mill, the Manelium walkway and the River Goit itself, which sits below the railway line heading into the station. The line itself was constructed on a ledge that was blasted out of the cliff face and it wasn't just the Hope Valley line that was constructed here. When you look at the railway tunnel heading out of the station, you will notice a second tunnel which has been blocked off. This belonged to the Hayfield branch, which ran from Newmall Central to Hayfield from 1868 till its closure in January 1970. The line was brought from British Rail by Derbyshire County Council and now forms the Set Valley Trail. There is a lot to explore in New Mills, and as you walk to the second station at New Mills Newtown, you come across something that is still going strong today. So, by 1810, New Mills had nine cotton mills three weaving mills and three print works. And in the modern day, obviously that industry has obviously declined, but that's not the only thing that is here and living strong. We have the Swizzles factory. Um, obviously, as you can see, drumsticks, refreshers, love hearts, palm violets, you name it, it's all made here. Um, I think they employ about 600 um, employees. So there's a big operation going on. And to be fair, there's quite a, sweet smell in the air i have to admit um and you know this has been here since what well, it says 1928 so you can just imagine i do believe reading that there was a previous site before they came to new mills um but no it's nice to see places like this in the peak district still getting you know big things attached to them it's great to see in fact their previous site was a market stall in hackney london and back then they were known as the matlow brothers they were forced to relocate to New Mills in 1940 due to the Blitz, where it remains today. Running alongside the factory, you will notice a waterway known as the Peak Forest Canal, which dates back way before the railways in 1796 and stretched for nearly 15 miles. Its purpose was to help bring limestone around Dove Holes, but as Dove Holes is over a thousand foot above sea level, a Peak Forest tramway was built to carry the limestone to the canal's terminating point at Bugsworth. With the coming of the railways, the canal used declined and fell into disuse until it was restored for today's purposes in 1974. Right then, so that was a highly enjoyable walk from New Mills Central to New Mills Newtown and we are now here on the Buxton Line. Um, I have to say, it is always a pleasure to walk between the two because as you, I've shown you, you know, you've got the Manilian Walkway, you've got the tours, it's just the landscape as a whole and you've got the industrial heritage that you do walk past and also the sweet factory um so our train arrives in about five minutes time so i'm not gonna ramble on and on and on and on like i am now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna board the train and on the journey towards buxton i'm going to explain more about the uh, buxton line its history in a bit more detail for you however we're not going straight to buxton we will be stopping at chapel on the frith as you know i've been there before but I feel like it's a station that I need to show Graham. So I'm gonna do that. But also I will delve into a bit more history there of another railway that was close by. So let's learn more about the Buxton Line. The Buxton Line connects Buxton to Manchester and comprises of 15 stations with a total length of 19 miles. 
It originated with the Stockport, Disley and Whaley Bridge Railway, which was built by the London North Western Railway to connect to the Cromford and High Peak Railway. In 1863, they built an extension from Whaley Bridge via Chapel and the Frith to Buxton, which stalled the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railways plans for the area, and also the Midland Railway. The latter two railways were then forced to combine on a line north of the London North Westerns, and it went through New Mills, part of which is the Hope Valley Line, and it branched at Millersdale. As a result of this, Buxton never achieved mainline railway status. And as we pulled in to Chapel and the Frith Station, it was time to find out about another line in the area. So we are now at Chapel on the Frith. Now it's been quite a while since I've been here and I absolutely love this station. And this is a station I had to come and show you. I really had to. The views are amazing and we'll go down in a second and explore a bit more. But one thing I did want to point out and you like this, there's a foot crossing between the two platforms. Now this is one of very, very few that remain across the network. And the reason being is, if you look up there, there's a road path whatever you want to call it and there are houses up there so it's easy access for people to come down as there is no real suitable alternative um so it's needs must i suppose and it has to stay here so but i like that it's a quirky feature i don't know about you but i, I quite like stuff like this oh yes yeah i've seen i've, I've seen little crossings like that before at stations uh, at little stations like this are really quite quite quaint and uh quite uh quite interesting really <laughs> definitely but yes i'm going to show him chapel on the frith and then we're going to head down and do something different which i didn't do last time right then so we've just come a short walk down from chapel on the frith station which is up there and we've now come down to another railway line now this is what is known as the great rocks line um I'm not going to go into too much detail because I want to cut away and give you some of the history on it because it's not just as you see it today. There is actually quite an extensive history here that relates back. Um, luckily enough, it was a shame we was a bit further down the road, actually. We um, didn't get a chance to get the camera up, but there was a, a Class 66 GBRF with Stone Train as we went past. Obviously, as we're near Buxton, you can probably link it together. But nonetheless, I'm going to cut away and give you the history on the Great Rocks line. And I think you'll like this. This line originally opened in 1867 as an extension to the Manchester, Buxton, Matlock and Midland Junction Railway, allowing passengers to connect from trains from London to Manchester for the first time. Unfortunately, the line closed to passengers in 1968, leaving only the northern section, which is open only for freight and emergency diversion for the Buxton line. Freight currently runs along and heads over the fantastic Chapel Milton Viaduct before diverging onto the Hope Valley line in either direction over at Chinley. The line also has two disused stations which were called Chapel and the Frith Central and also Peak Forest, which still has its station buildings today and is a freight hotspot for railway enthusiasts. We went back to the railway station for the last leg of our journey which took us to the end of the line at Buxton. There was a stop in between at Dovehole Station, and for a fun fact, did you know that part of the music video for Lewis Capaldi's Someone You Loved was filmed here? A few moments later, we arrived at Buxton Station, and this place holds plenty of railway history. It was also nice to see both platforms being used and made for a great photo opportunity. This is definitely the perfect end for this railway journey and it was great to experience it once again. Right then, so we are now at the end of the line at Buxton and this station just screams railway history. As I've discussed before, you've got, well it wasn't just the only station here as, as you know, it's commonly known. Um, you've got the original fan window, you've got, there's a model inside. Go check out my other video on Buxton. Um, there's quite a lot that I have discussed, however, what I didn't do was discuss the railway history. So based on that, 
it would be rude not to do another video on Buxton and talk about its sole railway history here. So we're going to do that um, after a bit of breakfast, of course. But I just want to say to Graham, how did you find your small little stints on the Buxton and the Hope Valley lines? So far, so good. Absolutely brilliant. Breathtaking views are absolutely gorgeous. You just cannot describe what it's like on, on the views. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really nice so far. So there we go, happy chappy. So like I said, we're gonna finish off here, have some breakfast and come back and do the railway history of Buxton and it needs to be done. So thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you next time in another video.